and the bands and see exactly what's going to go down. EDG, of course, getting blue side this time. And I don't want to be too harsh on EDG because um, this is the first international experience for three of their players. That, that first game against White that they lost at the beginning of the group stages was literally their first international experience. So it might be that nervous aspect. And you can't underestimate the at aspect on this stage. Yes, there you go. Your Thresh ban, is as it, expected. Is it going to force him onto Blitzcrank? That's, gonna, that's kind of been his fallback champion. It does also mean that Maokai is going to get first picked in there. Janna's also snuck through. Is Westor going to go for it again? He blind picked Zed the first time around, and it did work out, but it put him in a hard situation. And they were on the back foot for so long, but they've taken it again. This is the exact same lineup so far for AHQ, the Lee Sin and Zed. So they do have early game play making potential. This is one of the keys for HQ. We'll see if they can actually make some early game plays. Because actually, last time around, they won it in the late game. And they seem very confident with their bands here as well. These three bands coming out in both previous games in the group stage by AHQ. So they feel that the research that they've done is certainly working out for them. Yeah, so it is pretty interesting, actually, these top lane bans that they do because they actually banned Alistar, Zillion, and Ryze when they were on the other side. So even first pick, they're not going to first pick Alistar. That means they don't play it because it's so strong. And they end up having to give over Maokai. Well, Nami's got himself his Lucian, but it's Braum alongside him this time around for FCZF with the Janna out there. No longer. Is Janna the unkillable? Brahmo will be looking to block all of that damage. The question is, will HQ just bypass that gigantic shield? Zed certainly will. Well, so far I have to say, this is looking very good for EDG. As far as team fights, they like to have those mid game and really shine through in the late game team fights. They've got a tremendously powerful front line here. Maokai and Braum is such a beastly combination for those mid-game team fights. Ooh. Are they gonna switch things up here? Garnet Devil and Jinx have been uh, definitely a strong pairing for AHQ. Will Pride's here be going towards Rumble. The thing is, Jinx against the Braum Lucian lane is very dangerous. Ooh, he's locked in. She does not have an escape of her own, so you gotta be really good with your flame choppers or something, or have very good support because a Braum jumping on you with Lucian backing him up is very, very dangerous. There's a lot of kill potential. Well, there's no rumble play at all for Prides throughout the entire summer split. So, obviously, there's a lot of people who've been practicing it. Yep. Obviously, we're looking towards Dyrus that have picked it up there. And it does answer some of that team fighting ability for the team if they can get Prides uh, a nice lead. As we saw at Samsung White, they ran it into. Um, uh, a Maokai as well, and they just focused up there and they got the rumble ahead very early. Okay, here we go. Now it's on. Watch out, yeah, to Rengar, which of course clearly played in game one of the group stage between EDG and AHQ. And Cassadin then picked up for you, a champion which you can certainly go big on. Actually had three games played throughout LPL Summer in the playoffs, a 2 1 record with that. AHQ here looking for support and Green Tea has traditionally fallen back onto that Leona, his second most played champion after Thresh throughout GPL and their playoffs. So, will it be Leona? And how does that lane match up to Lucian Braum, or does it not? Well, as we said, it could be an explosive lane. There's mm, a lot of kill potential there for a Braum Lucian jumping in. But. The Leona kind of swaps it around too because they've got a lot of damage they can output. They've got chain stuns. The Leona stun into the Flame Chompers is also something that they're going to have to watch out for. And while you might be jumping in on Cassadin, you've got to be careful what follows him up because he could be jumping straight in towards that Equalizer. The kid get laid down, locked up by Green Tea, and exploded. Yeah, there is a question here. This Cassidy, it's it's a perplexing pick because a lot of people have shied away from it. They're picking it into Zed here. You can build Cassidy armor heavy. You can go with uh, well, the Frozen Heart, and you can go. Well, it also builds into your, uh, you know, questioning about his roaming. You know, this is oh, the yeah, champion exactly. that he absolutely has to roam on. Um, 
that's going to be a big issue if you're yeah. playing Cassidy and you don't roam around. Uh, but really, I'm interested in the build because you mentioned the Rumble Equalizer. Cassidy's very good at getting around the magic damage here. So if he can avoid that magic damage source, maybe we see one of those armor-heavy Cassidy's that goes more melee range. Uh, but yeah, you don't know that he could still build AP and look for the uh, jump-in kills. Well, it's go big or go home for both Absolutely. teams at this stage. So, well, <laughs> you've got to pull it off right here. Well, the tiebreaker, of course, is about to get underway. Keep sending us your tweets over on Twitter, of course. <laughs> to <laughs> use the hashtag EDGWIN or hashtag AHQWIN. And, of course, don't forget to include at LOL Esports. And we'll check your answers in-game. It's the final game of Taipei. We've had a fantastic four days here in the group phase. We've had some absolutely amazing games to finish off the final day. Upsets all around. Could we end with another? Well, let's see here. All right, well, we are going to have him start out with an armor-heavy build. Not going to go Crystalline Flask route for you, and he is going to go Cloth 5. So that means he may uh, just look to stay up there and use his auto attacks to sustain his mana. Interesting how this wave control will go early for him in the Zed matchup. Should be able to stay there as long as he doesn't get ganked by Lee Sin too early. Oopsies. Um, well, the crowd, the crowd loved it. The crowd loved the failed ward there. That's gone it, Devil and Nami. Going to be having a bit of a brawl here inside of the river. This is uh, early stuff. As the ward goes down there, not quite taken out though. And, well, EDG being oh, very aggressive and they take down the ward. Oh, uh, they're going to get the second one as well. All right, he leveled his stun for the auto attack reset. Crowd loves the ward game here so far. HQ comes out really ahead in that, I guess. Two trinket wards killed, one failed. The smaller things that yeah. could tip you, give you that They're riding confidence. that momentum from last game, D-Man. <laughs> <laughs> They've still got it. <laughs> the ward momentum. Westor versus you, unstoppable, whatever you'd like to call him, in this mid lane. He has a lot of pressure on his shoulders, and he's against Taipei's favorite son, I feel, in Westor. We've all seen him playing some huge plays in Twisted Fate in the YouTube clips from many a moon ago. Yeah. But right now he's on Zed, which worked out very well last time around. Pride comes in, fully charged on the Flame Splitter. They're going for the blue invite. Did they have a defensive ward to see this? Blue's going to yeah. be exchanged. Counter. Now, Green Tea and Garnet Devil, they're up in the lane here. They know that Rengar's on their side, so they're not going to overextend. They actually seed complete control of the bottom lane here. They do not get the push. They get 100% zoned out. Interesting lane swap here, d or uh, jungle swap actually, which completely benefits EDG. They've they've definitely got the uh, the jump on them now. You're you're talking about who's going to have the more kill potential because both of them melee supports. It's 100% in EG, EDG's favor now. Plus they get that income from Targons. Green Tea's going to have to hold on to his Targon charges to try and help CS under turret. So, early advantage then for EDG, an area of their game which they definitely, I think, to have a chance at being world champions, need to improve on. There is West or Z statistics from that last one. Solid KDA 8. Have to bring that here to the table. And this would, I think, truthfully be the first big upset of the World Championships if China's number one seed were to go out to the second seed of GPL. Here comes Nas, they're gonna focus top, try and get that Rumble fed, turn a fed Rumble into team fight wins. Oh, they've drive painted Ooh. him in. He knew he'd overheat him, but he's gone too early. Nice. Nice. I he think got he's, into the middle bush. I think he's realized it, surely. He's already stepped well to his turret. Yeah, he's not having any of that. He's teleporting back. Yeah, so Nas was looking for a counter gank here just because of the aggressive style Prides is starting out with. He thought there may be a move from Clear Love up to that side of the map. There is no move, though. Teleport is burned, and they're just going to exchange purchase times. You're losing a bit of CS from that one there, though. That was Westor. Gonna go aggressive onto you, as you mentioned, starting off Cloth and Pot. There is Pride. Back into lane with an amp tone. 
And himself more pots. This bottom lane continues to be a problem. Big. And a big one as well for yeah. AHQ. That jungle swap there of the blue buffs. I mean, Garnet Devil and Green Tea, there's no way that they could contest in lane. They didn't finish off the blue buff either, so. Ah, gonna, gonna leave it there for a while. Delay that second spawn. Nah, uh, just seize it now. He's gonna clear it out. Okay. 25 to 11 CS in this bottom lane. That's a hefty lead. No Ford wards, though. Me. No wards. Here comes Lee Sin around the side. What are they going to be able to do? Should be fairly be obvious. There's the level ups. This would be surely the moment to go for it. But HQ can't step too far forward without making it too obvious. Yeah, exactly. They have to be patient here. If they can draw out a dash from Name to go for harass, then they... Oh, the straight Q! The oh. bait is strong! They go for Name, they force the flash away, and they're gonna try and turn this one back around. FCZF does force him back, and the stun almost landed on Green T. Here it comes they come off well on this one, and as you say, clear off is now coming in. AHQ have to back away and respect this. Managing to burn both of Name's summoners there, so Flash Heal being traded for the Ignite of Green T. And EDG noticing that they've gone back there, just going to push Nas away. There's Cleelove's Rengar stats, and two for two at the moment. 10 3 19, solid KDA for him on that, and going to be doing a bit of counter jungling here. Meanwhile, that top lane, which we saw the action in earlier, is doing some good work. Once again, his prize, but CS remains equal. Koro just needs to be careful that he doesn't go too deep on that one. Oh, Westor is low yeah. here. He Use level six as well, so as yeah. soon as those minions go into the tower, ah, actually, Clearlove's backed away. Clearlove's not six, yeah, he's only level four, so. Wow, you're right, you could jump in. Oh, Prize, he's got the whole wave with him. Equalizer goes down, hits the overheat on Koro. He's getting locked upon the tower, though. He's going to get taken down. One more shot, just about. Shields it off, tries to turn it back around. He has to back off from Koro here. He could sapling and twist an advance on him before he could do anything. Pretty nice outplay under turret, but it does uh, create a discrepancy with flash timers here. Baiting it. Oh, Is that there... Gonna do the damage there, but Koro... They've got to oh. know this is a dive. Clearlove has to react. Clearlove is reacting as well. He's already there. That's a good ward. I think, did they spot that one, actually? I think Clearlove was far enough up there that he did spot that ward coming down. So Koro going to clear out that wave. Yeah, then we see Clearlove actually scanned there on that corner. So he did see that go down, which means that no gank going to happen for AHQ. It also meant that Koro did recall. He's going to be coming back to lane with a walk, though, since his teleport was used earlier on. Similar scenario for Prides on the other side, though. Now, the question is here for Nas, does he want to try and play off the strong lane, the rumble here, and try and turn that rumble into the team fight power that we were looking for for a dragon fight? Or does he want to make the risky play and try and salvage the bottom lane? Because at this moment, the bottom lane is going to snowball pretty hard. Lucian with an extra pickaxe here over Jinx is going to go downhill very fast. However, they do have both summoners burned from Name. So if they were sure that Clear Love was not on the bottom side of the map, if they got some division and they got intel on Clear Love's position, then turning around that bottom lane would be oh. big, but it's just so risky at this point. Level six, and they're both level four under turret. It might not even be possible to turn it around at this point. Straight up bullying him in this bottom lane. Now, mate, is this finally the time where he turns up? Has he been bottling it throughout the group stage to finally actually react when it counts? Now is certainly the time for anyone to shine on either of these teams. Westall, though, he's got to be respected. He does roam quite a lot. This time around, getting a little poke on towards you, giving him pause for thought there. Didn't all in, just keeps his cool. And neither of these so far have thrown that ignite either way. And again, Naz trying to look towards the top, but it will get spotted. There's by no flash for Koro, though, and he does hit the slow. What is Naz waiting for? Christmas, by the looks of it. He's not going to go in there. And or the World oh. Cup. Okay. They hit the slow. The he hit Cup. the slow. All right. Well, he's not going to go for it now. He's on the ward. Koro knows what's going on. 
Sapling charge probably in that side bush should be enough to protect him. Level six. Oh no. Clear love versus the very, very weak bottom yeah. lane. Yeah, he's not going to get away from this one. There is Bram coming in as well. And not even really under uh, turret range. And that is a simple first blood from EDG. It's clear love that comes in. He gets that kill. They're going straight to middle. Oh, you could see Naz was pushing it with Westhor. The dragon is a possibility. EDG are going to look to collapse towards that one. They will take that and look towards the top lane now. Koro, he's about to get died by HQ. HQ better make this top lane move count. Oh, spotted by the ping ward. He's got to see it there at least and kill the ward. You'd hope. Well, it does it matter is the real question on this one. Equalizer's gone down. There's the death mark. That's going to pop as he comes back in. And that is a kill back. So they trade the kill. Oh, they might what? end up losing Green Tea here. He's in the middle of nowhere. Good chompers coming down. But Green Tea surely will fall. Ultimate from FTZF. And here comes you as well. He's actually going to dive under the tower. And it's a destruction down the bottom lane. They trade one kill for two, plus a tower, plus a dragon. EDG not messing around this time. They've got the potential for those dives. They brought the strong front line this time. Much easier comp to pull off than the long range poke comp. And they do not hesitate. They got the bottom lane ahead, set up Name to succeed, and that's gonna be their clear path to victory here. Play off of that bottom lane, easy turret, easy objectives down there for them. Big, big lead. HQ do answer with the top turret though. I just can't understand why they would go back to that bottom lane. They knew they had three members in the top, so they clearly told EGG there is zero support down here. They knew they were on Dragon. They knew there was four members down there, yet they still walked straight down there without any ward coverage, and neither of them being level six. Bottom Crazy. lane has been hung out to dry here. Yeah. Let's see what they can do, though. They're going to try and freeze down that bottom lane, it looks like. Interesting. Uh, that is a mammoth, mammoth gap between Name and Garnet Devil. Yeah. 94 CS to 49. He's still not hit level six, while Name is already at seven. It's already equate to what, 1,500 gold differential. That's over half the gold that Garnet Devil has. Oh, Pride, he's caught out. He's in trouble. Yeah, he's got a flash. There. Good flash. Yeah, it's a good flash and actually will get him back to the tower far enough. However, EDG now have four men in the top lane and can go straight for this turret. And we can see the AHQ coming back in. That's an equalizer across the entire go team. And we are going to see Nama here hit with Whoa. the death mark. Does the other damage he does? And he goes back to the shadow in the lane. Westdorf. Coming up big here, that gives them a hope. He's got both of the kills for AHQ. That, that also opens up the map. They can have Green Tea hard push. Green Tea can switch gears now, shove as quickly as he possibly can. Or Garnet Devil, excuse me. <laughs> ah, ah, my turn to mess it up. You never time. catch me doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Koro has responded. He's gone down, teleported down the bottom line. That will stop Garnet Devil's push. But it does put a pause for thought once again onto EDG. And Westhorpe coming out big in a straight up 1v1 on you and gets away with it. <laughs> Aname! Ha! Got you already! He got you in the mid lane. He killed Name. Name! Damn it! <laughs> we are on point today. Joe, save us! Go! Joe! This is my point to leave you we're out. We're on here, Joe! <laughs> to leave you out with no hope. All right. right now, EDG. 3,000 gold in the lead, 30 minutes in. They're looking for another turret. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> You'll never catch me, copper. <laughs> oh, okay. I think we might need to bring Riv and Jat on. It's, been a, show back up here it's and been a long day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there is tiebreaker game. Some fantastic matches today. And currently, Edward Gaming are looking get their place in the quarterfinals. It would be against Starhorn Royal Club, so it would be an all-China affair if they were to get there. And AHQ are not done with yet, especially if Westor has anything to do with it. Yeah, I feel like he could be the hope for AHQ as I think, you know, the, the initial pressure was on Westor to perform. He's mm. probably the biggest name, well, I say probably, he is the biggest name in this team. And he's got a lot of weight to carry on his shoulders. He's going to have to go massive here in the remainder of this match. 
if AHQR to take down EDG for now a second time in one day would be pretty incredible in itself to put uh -oh. his semi uh, quarterfinal place. There is Westor. He's going to try and get away to the shadows, but they're all there. Puts down the death mark, but no, no, no. not enough damage. To get, nowhere near enough damage to get the kill, and he falls. That's clear of second kill of the game. Great use of the Pride Stalker there. You've got the double pink wards, hides in the pickle. Pixel Bush. And the passing Westor has no chance of escaping there. That's why he turned around and used his ult. He already used his gap closer. There was no way he was going to escape. Let's see how uh, EDG actually turned the screws this time around. Because remember, they did have a good early game last time. They had the lead, but they took so long that they gave AHQ a couple openings. They gave up the top turret for saving the bottom inner there. Rides could have held on, but instead he's had to go and keep Koro alive. Honey Devil reacted to covering off this mid lane, but while all this lane advantage is working EDG's favor, it's giving you basically free time to get going on that Kassadin. We all know what happens when Kassadin finally gets his roll on. He's almost got the Rod of Ages completed. So on his Hourglass seems to be following, but we'll see whether that Seeker's Arm go progresses into it, of course could just be to prevent the damage from Westall. Now, what AHQ are hoping for at this point in the game is EDG to try and group up and try and force something. Um, maybe ED preying on that pressure that they're feeling to actually end it out quicker this time. Because AHQ have the ability to turn around a dive. They've got full penetration on this rumble. If they can actually turn around a dive and a team fight from EDG, then they can come back here in this mid game. EDG do have the Brom and Maokai, so if they get a little uh, happy here, trigger happy, Ooh, and dive this. Bottom lane prides. Never you mind. You heading it's, down towards him. They're all He's already going. backing away. Everybody's heading around there. Green team's focused on. There goes the equalizer. Prides tries to juke it out using that push to the advantage, and he's got so much damage on you. You has to try and get away, but he gets locked up. Green team comes around. Solar flare locks on towards Clearlo. Clearlo gets knocked out. Now finds his target on there. MCZF now focused on. He gets locked in. Garni Devil can't get close enough, but Nami is getting free time in the inner lane right now, and he's pushing on the mid. That time yeah. in the mid lane is paid with blood, though. Two kills already. Now they're going to get FCZ. Yeah, Westall coming into this one. It will be Westall to pick up kill number three. And you see Name, he actually took the route through the top side of AHQ's jungle to get away from that middle lane. And this is the, the danger. And it was in that last game as well that AHQ aren't scared to say, you know what, guys, they've gone a bit too far up that lane. Fight them. This is their game. This is what AHQ survive on. And it wasn't a tower dive, but it was an overextension of EDG. They all jump on Pride there, and e uh, you does not respect the power of the overheating rumble. Goes down even to the minion attacks. Uh, in the long range right there. And then Nas, as you said, this HQ team, they do not hesitate to jump on skirmishes. So they jump on EDG and they come out with three extra kills. Name bought some time in the mid lane, got a bit of damage and some more minions, but not worth it for them at this point. They are giving an opening back to HQ. Rushing that Seeker's <laughs> I think this was an obvious vote as well. <laughs> a lot of people rooting for the underdog of AHQ. They've got a long ways ahead of them, though. Oh, oh, they look oh. going to flash in there. They're going for green tea. They have the equalizer coming down. Whoa. Whoa. They're, They're turning it around. Can you believe it? They're on Two to you. They're on to you. Nat goes deep on him. Where is Nami? He's round the side. But Westall's in as well. He gets one. He goes back to the shadow. Oh, my God. They've picked up four, and they've only lost the support. Why HQ? <laughs> One foot in front of the other, Joe. They get the picked out bottom. They get the skirmish in the red side jungle, where EDG had vision. We're going to have to see a replay of that one. The crowd is loving it, though. A big, another big chunk out of this gold lead. Clear Love jumps in onto Leona, and a beautiful equalizer. Three members, Green uh, Green T sets up the entire fight. Garnet Devil with the beautiful rocket to finish them off. And then Westor, 2v1, able to get the kill once again onto Name. Yu has to jump over the wall to escape.
He 2v1 the carries. That was West yes, Dog. Sir, he 2v1 did. versus you and Name. And they managed to get the kill. And that differential in CS for Name, yes, it was a big deal. But Garnet Devil's catching up. He's getting the assists. And Westor, he is rocking and a rolling right now. But it's all about prides this time around. Holy hell. That, he that has equalizer. Been stomping on Rumble. Rumble this tournament has been impressive. He's a top lane champion that I was not expecting to see going so big from the, some of these teams. Once he gets those double pen, uh, the boots of penetration and the haunting guys, never ever underestimate the power of these pre-20 minute Rumble ultis. Prides comes up big. As well, the fallout from the rest of the team. We have to give it to them. Green T there, he took the brunt of the of the assault from Clear Love, and then Garnet Devil followed up with a rocket very quickly, turning the numbers in their favor. And HQ were able to regain vision control of their own jungle. You know, from what I've seen of these teams, even if EDG do manage to get through to that quarterfinals, you gotta think the Star on Road Club are by far the favorites. They have had such an impressive group phase, and EDG is stumbling every step of the way, and AHQ are pushing them to their limits right now. EDG look to have this game in the control, but suddenly AHQ, they are winning these fights every time they brawl. Crazy, crazy game. What well, a crazy pair of games. Whatever happens in the rest of this one, being two cracking matchups. You see EDG here moving in, gonna clear out some wards. Look at AHQ's position, they're trying to group together. It's an interesting scenario because EDG, they have this lead that they wanted to make use of. Of course, that's understandable. But, you know, they've got these two champions. They're solo laners, both with Rod of Ages, both trying to stack up. Mm. And they fought when they were fresh Rod of Ages on both of them. Uh, and it was just good, a good job of HQ turning those, you know, sort of dives, I guess. Well, they're out of position back here, around. though. EDG have four, five members all in and around the Dragon. 30 seconds for that one. Prides and Naz have both gone in towards that top lane. They've suddenly realized, oh, we are out of position. They've got zero ward coverage in there. EDG can see absolutely everything in this lower half of the map. So this Dragon will be theirs. Yeah, to the point where they seem to have left clear love to pretty much solo that one. Mm. They've got such good vision down in AHQ's jungle that they're not going to be able to come anywhere near it. HQ, though, are moving closer and closer towards that middle lane. They've not got Garnet Devil anywhere near them, so Nami and Clear Love will have free reign. And that will be going over to EDG. That increases their lead now. All three dragons going their way. Up 3-1 in turrets, but HQ, <laughs> they're the big fighters in this one. Yeah, EDG have calmed down a bit, though. Took a deep breath collected their thoughts here, and they're going to wait on their stacking items. They're going to group up for uh, the team fight to try and make use of this front line that they have. They do have control of the map, so they can slowly get those advantages over AHQ. Have to be worried about overextending like that again, though. Absolutely. It's, it's give them pause for thought, as you mentioned. It's slow things down. Now, mate, when and got himself his second item complete though. And that is a big deal. The Ghost Blade going in with that Infinity Edge. Westall shoves another wave in. That will get cleared. At the moment, AHQ themselves, you know, they've not gone wild. Off the back of picking up those couple of kills. They haven't gone headlong rushing in towards the tower thinking it is our game to win now. They are very much taking their time being careful about the fights they take. Yeah, look at this. They do not fight outside of their own vision. They have slowly just littered their own jungle with vision. They gave up that dragon. Nobody even thought about going out there. They didn't waste any time going outside. They're just going mid. They see Nami out of position. They're rushing straight for that mid lane. Oh, can they take it? You're going to come across. Nami will slowly but surely make his way to that mid lane, or at least so that AHQ lose vision of him down bottom. That's forced them to back away. And EDG's turret will be safe for now. Cleelov is actually making a move down there as well. So maybe looking to trap someone out. There'll be a pink ward of EDG there. Spotted They're for it. They're waiting for the fight this time. They see the pink ward there. They know the blue buff is up. 
They, yeah, they don't really want to fight in the jungle over this blue buff here, HQ. EDG are still massively ahead. Well, I guess, I guess they can because uh, Koro's going up top there. Maybe he'll teleport in. Now he just wants to steal it. They don't want to fight over it. Managing to take it there and get away without any problems. So, a bit more for EDG. They're piling up in towards the top half of the jungle. They were trying to catch Koro out there. They saw him come around the side, but Pride will go for it, actually. It's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Koro in there. West Is this a really fighting far one? Away. Koro comes around. Nas misses the kick, and they are going to back away from this one. AHQ do not want to fight here, but F EDG absolutely do. FCZ have tries to lock in their green team. Take a very low. Has to use the solo play. Will get locked down. There's the equalizer going down. Koro is still going to focus. Westor, as you mentioned, oh, oh. just joining the fight. Koro survives. You get focus. Westor comes on towards him. Hasn't quite got enough to finish him off, though. Yes, he does. Finally gets himself a kill. It's only a one for one trade, though, but it's AHQ doing the chasing. They should head towards that mid tower now. They've got the minion wave actually pushing with them. Take the objectives. They've got position on them. They should be able to get that global gold. Mid turret is under fire here. Pride yeah. just backed off. Not that much wave. Oh, clear love scares them himself. He's teleported. Koro comes back around. He teleports in towards them. Pride was not there. Clear love is low, though. FCZF is low, but AHQ are dropping. Pride is taken out. Garnet Devil goes down. Westor is running. And just like that, beautiful EG, teleport. beautiful claps from Koro. That seals the deal there. Yeah, great teleport there from Koro, able to lock them in. And we saw the power of this really strong front line, forcing that fight in the red side jungle when they saw Westor all the way bottom, trying to split with push with that Zed. Not really got anyone to match up to the tankiness that EDG have right now. And it's just become a little harder for them as well. Zonya's hourglass for you means that he can avoid Westor's uh, death mark. I think that could, as things go on, be the problem for AHQ. Obviously, Naz, you'd expect now the one to get a bit more defensive. Because, well, Pride, he's full on damage at this point. Just picked up a Negatron Cloak. And EDG holding on to that lead despite a couple of good fights out of AHQ. EDG, Ooh. I've obviously had a talk about this, said yes, you know. We have to win this game, obviously, and we can't afford to make the mistakes that we did last time. We have to be decisive. Although, shakiness has already been shown there. Well, one thing that won't happen again is Westor soloing you like that. You has now completed his on his hourglass, so he does have another answer uh, for Westor if he gets targeted once again. So Westor is going to have to change his focus completely to Name now for the assassination. And Name's already working on his answer for Westor. Quicksilver Sash is in the works for Name. Once EDG have those two key items on their two carries, it becomes very, very difficult for Westor to pull that off again. We did see it anyway, though, in the end of the last game. Yeah. They were still able to take out Name. Well, it's going to take a fortunate series of events, though. HQ playing a risky game, knowing that Baron Bait is a possibility. EDG trying to force something in there, but instead wisely choosing, you know what, they've got a gigantic advantage. Let's keep the waves crashing. AHQ don't have anything to worry about right now because they're all equal across the line of the middle half of the map. The dragon spawning, and again, AHQ not getting involved. Yeah, uh, basically what EDG do now is use this massive gold lead to just control the map. They're so short range, it is kind of hard for them to actually press any further turrets. So all they have to do, control the map with their team fight prowess. They continue to get the dragons, they get the control around Baron, and then they can look for picks. This Braum, Maokai, Rangar, Kassadin, crazy, crazy pick potential. If somebody walks into EDG wards, away from turrets, they can easily catch somebody and follow it up. Biggest part about Kassadin, chasing down people even after the rework even after the increased mana cost here that's going to stick around for him. They can still jump on targets. And now EDG have grouped themselves towards the bottom side of the map. Westor making short work, though, of that minion wave. And EDG decide, no, 
I'm going to keep pushing on through there. We'll steal away the jungle, replenish the wards on that side of the map. Yeah, the point for them shoving in is to shove up the waves to pressure HQ, and they use that time to get that vision down for their picks. Both sides of the jungle, they do have potential now. Uh, we'll see if they actually start making moves over towards Baron, or if they feel like it's too early yet. But yeah, name of the game for EDG, control the map right now. But like HQ did in the previous game earlier on in the group stage, they're very good at keeping those waves from pushing against them. They've they went up, shoved out the top wave. They've just shoved the bottom wave out. They're pushing the middle wave. Static and Shiv Jinx is great at have to go back to the drawing board and start all over again, pushing those waves in, keeping the pressure on. This is the big prize, though. The famed river worm. <laughs> the worm? <laughs> That's what they call it on the noob stream. I wanted to spit it in at some point. The river worm. Okay. River worm. <laughs> what you call the Baron. All right, that's a one-time thing. We won't fit that back in. And, um, well, so they started it. Yeah, and I'm not sure. Well, it's going to be nice to be a bit of a hero. Actually, they've come straight off of that one. Seeing Westor looping around the side. There's a bit of a vision test there to see if yeah. the HQ had any reaction to it. Westor is heading across. He's just taking Wolves, not going too far away. They started right. again. This time he is a long way away. They're going to see him passing that minion wave, and they know they can start this one off. Miracle and go steal. For it. It's got to be a miracle steal here. Naz is Rumble racing on the feet. outside. He's going pretty low. They're backing off. Ooh. I think wise from EDG Weapon. was a risk. They've caught Green T. They've slowed him. They're going to cut the cooling down on him. It's not enough damage, though. The Chompers will cut them away. Wow. That Baron, as you said, it was risky. Just out of sight of smite range, and they stopped. The I didn't think that EDG would be so easily dissuaded from pursuing that fight. But they just return right back to Baron, continue after their work. They get Here come it. HQ, drop another couple wards in the back. He's got to risk it. They can see he's going for it. He's going to have to dive. It's going to have to be a miracle smite. Can he land it through? There's the Sony Wave. He's gone too early, as you said. He's going to have to jump through. There's the Sony Flare. Just try and go for it. Now lands the Sonic Wave. Has he got enough? No. Oh! But Lillard will get taken down. There goes Price dropped over the side there. Westall comes through. He's been focused out. Naz is in trouble. And Edward Gaming are pushing through AHQ. They will get aced. And that surely has to be Edward Gaming with one foot in the quarterfinals. Clear love with the clutch smite. That is going to be EDG running up the mid. And Naz must have been so close to that one there. Yeah. Moving in onto it. Still has smite available in his... On Whoa. his deathbed, sad news there for Nav. But EDG here, pushing up that mid, are going to be getting at least the in him. Green T's up in 10, Pride's in just less. The rest of the team will be a little bit later, but I think EDG are done here for now. Looks like the bottom inner turret will be a kind of exit pickup for them as well. That rumble is very oh, no. scary around the Baron pit when it starts raining down on you guys. And you can see why EDG backed off of it initially, but the presence of mind Clear Love was able to get it. I think it was his smite. Let's take another Let's take look. Aha! Now we shall answer the question. Westor goes in. Yeah, so they all back off. Good rumble ulti. They catch him down there. Clear Love oh. flashes back in for it and does grab it with the smite. I don't wonder why Naz didn't go for the smite there. He was certainly stood next to it. Nobody was anywhere near him. Well, he was waiting for it to get right into range. Yeah. Just a little bit slow on the trigger finger. Clear Love flashed in to try and get a Q on it, I believe, as well, an empowered yeah. Q. So that burst, I uh, probably wasn't expecting that burst. Leaves EDG 13k ahead. Half an hour, let's call it, into this one. High scoring kills, though, 14 to 11. But it's a massive lead for yeah. EDG. And we come back to kind of a similar scenario to the last game where AHQ can't afford to just sit back and lose tower after tower after tower, however slow. At some point they have to say, okay, we try it now. The big difference this time around is that EGG have brought such a massive front line that they can dive these turrets. They've got the Baron buff. They don't have to stop at towers. They don't have to stop and wait and poke you. They can jump right on you. You know what, while it is a massive lead, and yes, Edward Gaming are very much in control now. I still am far from convinced 
because AHQ have looked good in some of these team fights. Of course, even when EDG have been five, six, seven thousand ahead, AHQ was still getting very close in those team fights because they were getting the right picks off on the right targets. True enough. Starhorn Royal Club will be looking at this and thinking, have a team that has topped us throughout the year. Can we top them when it counts at the Worlds in the quarterfinals? Well, they are going to continue to pick up everything off of the map before heading for the more risky moves. This outer turret, not risky at all, should be an easy cleanup for EDG. Yeah. No, they shouldn't even uh, They're not trying to defend this yeah. one. We can see they're all, basically all five from AHQ are in the mid lane. Minion wave is going to come through and that tower will go down. I saw you just edging forward in the jungle just to see if anyone had come out of the base to try and defend that one to have a look at some vision down, which will be quickly swept away by EDG. So only the base stands here for AHQ. Disclaimer, of course, this is the exact position, pretty much, <laughs> that we've seen games change today with an inhibitor down in the middle lane. Last throw of the dice for AHQ Esports Club here, I feel. Culling, doing its work, forcing AHQ away from the Nexus turrets. Oh. Uh, the inhibitor turret, sorry, the inhibitor turret will go down. There's the equalizer from Pride. They lock up with the solar flare, but this is a very disjointed fight this time around from AHQ. The exhaust on Westor is doing exactly what it needs to. Prevents all of that damage going out. He will find himself one kill. You, though, does manage to get down the Zonyas. It just pulls off of the side there. Garni Devil locked up. Clearly poking on towards him. Now he comes around to sweep up. Gets himself one, two. Will he get the third? No, you will claim oh. that one. Westor comes around the side. Westor gets himself another. He gets a triple kill though, and he is left alone in that mid lane. It was a very sloppy fight, but it is Nami that's pushing. Mark. Is Westor going to buy home guards and go for this sucker? Oh, oh home he guards is. up. There they are. Where's he going? Uh, he's got no, no ulti. He's got no yeah. Blade of the Ruin King active. And yeah, Nami has. Gonna have his ghost blade in a second, so <laughs> that's dangerous in itself. He's gonna take this inhibitor down, keep Westor at arm's length. He's got the shield from that bloodthirster as well, which makes it all the more difficult to actually take him down. So two inhibitors gone from AHQ. The four for four fight that happened there though keeps them at least for now somewhat in this game. All right, so they actually leave this turret standing for quite a while with low health and take a decent amount of damage from it. Uh, which is why HQ are able to, able to get this fight so close. Because the team of EDG was split off there. So a lot of extra damage being dealt five versus two while it stood. But as we said in the end, Frontline here gets to go in. Look at this move from Westor, by the way. Shadow jumping over to you at the back. And then the last E there, able to pick up another kill. But as we know, Name. Last man standing with the extra life steal, able to pick up the inhibitors, which pretty much sealed the deal here for EDG. Sloppy team fight, clearly. Throughout this one, and that was a, I think there were 14, 15,000 gold ahead in that one, as you mentioned on the tower. And again, almost, almost getting ace themselves. Some tricky fights, but Name is actually delivering this game. He is 9-5 dominated the early game. Obviously had almost double the CS of Garnet Devil in the lane phase. Yeah, that start was really, really rough for HQ. Shoved all the way off first minion wave as Jinx and uh, Leona, even just Jinx Leona going into Lucius Rom, gonna be, gonna be tough anyway. He's hard as well. I mean, if you look at, if you look at Nami there with that Quicksilver Sash in the Zonyas, in the mid lane, Koro is just so ridiculously tanky, but burning through him. You saw him in that last one. I mean, he took four, five, six, seven turret hits before he actually went down. And there, as the Baron spawn in, EDG are going to go straight back out. And AHQ not even going to be able to challenge for this one. They've got all on just defending their base from those super minions. You like that jump from Clear Love, by the way, from the back of the red bush there, mm. getting vision into Baron. Nice little hop. That should be it though. EDG, Baron buff, two inhibitors down. They march their way out of the groups here. 
Well, AHQ all went back, purchased anything they could, pots, the lot, anything that could help them just try to keep them at bay for this one final push. Edward Gaming looking to just siege their way, just brute force their way through onto this final inhibitor turret. Clear them off at the side, getting spotted by that warden. Super Minions still pushing down the mid. Man, have well, it put on a show. Here goes Clear Love, though. Going over the top of the big one there. Pride's going to pop a very early Zonia, but I'm not sure he'll be able to escape. Throws down the Equalizer before he dies. Now it's going to be the next target. And there is you in the middle of the base. Can he finish them off? Gone. Devil and Westor got onto the fountain. That was the oh. Super Minion that's broken. Well, the Zonias did come out. Westor does get one, but he will die. Oh. And there is an ace in the end. And it's going to be Edward Gaming that push through, take down AHQ, and march on to the quarterfinals. Congratulations to EDG. They do make it out of groups through the tiebreaker. And we will get to see that uh, China versus China next round. Far from clean for Edward Gaming that they would have rather avoided this last tiebreaker game. And it almost makes it more heartbreaking for AHQ as well, the way that this has gone. You know, bowing out without this tiebreaker probably would have been less painful for them overall. But hey, they've given the credit, they've been, today especially, the win earlier on, the team fights in this one that gave us that few moments of, wow, can they actually do it here? They've done it before. They're winning the fights despite being behind, but just wasn't to be. They definitely put on a show for this home crowd and pushing it to this tiebreaker, pushing it to the limits. They showed up way more than people expected of them. They definitely rose above that bar. I'll tell you what, the body language of Edward Gaming there says everything. They were far from happy with that victory, but AHQ bowing to the Taipei crowd here. They put up a great performance, honestly, like you said. You know, they pushed them, especially in that first game in the group stage. The fact that they've managed to come from a one-on-three situation to tie at 3-3 was fantastic in itself. And they will obviously go back to drawing board, look at what could be and how they can turn things around and come back to 2015. Exactly, I mean, it was so close to being a fairy tale ending to the day almost. <laughs> well, we're gonna see Edward Gaming as well giving their respect to the fans here. And for those guys, there's some hard work to be done before they get to that quarterfinal stage where, of course, they're going to be playing against a, an old nemesis, I think we can say, a team that knows them, you could argue, better than any other. And I think Freak knocked the nail on the head earlier on when he was talking about where do you go to boot camp.